Rappelling is one of the fundamental skills for descending a canyon. Often underestimated, rappelling is a technique that is developed with experience, and mastering it is important for taking on progressively harder canyons. In this video, we'll cover some of the basic principles we should always follow. In preparation for rappelling, we should tidy away any loose straps, long hairs, etc. These are a danger to us because they can get jammed in our descender during our descent. We may also want to put on gloves to protect our hands from rope burn or hot descenders. This is especially important in dry canyons where these hazards are an ever-present danger. In wet canyons, we can often forgo gloves because the water absorbed by the ropes will dissipate any heat caused by friction. Next, we can set ourselves up on the rappel system. The techniques required for this are nuanced, and we covered this part of rappelling in other videos. Make sure you take the time to review these videos. Once we begin our descent, the basic principles for rappelling are largely the same. The first of which is control of the brake strand. Our descenders work by applying friction to the rope to make it easier to hold our body weight. This friction, however, is only helpful to us if we are always holding and controlling the brake strand of the rope. If we lose control of the brake strand, we risk falling uncontrolled. Good technique is holding the brake strand firmly below the descender with both hands. Our dominant hand should be the primary hand we use to control our descent, and our non-dominant hand is largely in place for backup. No matter what happens during our descent, we must always control the brake strand with at least one hand. To go down the rope, we loosen our grip on the rope to let it pass through our hands being careful to keep our hands away from the descender and never letting our hands get too close so we don't pinch our hand or glove in the descender. With our body, we should try to get perpendicular to the rock face, pressing our feet flat against the wall with each step. Direct pressure into the rock is key to being stable on slippery surfaces or in powerful waterfalls. When it is too difficult to stand, we can sit down and slide on our hip, which is easiest to do if we're sitting on our non-dominant hand side. When rappelling in water, we should try to keep our head in a neutral position so the water falls on the top of our helmet. This will spray the water outwards and away from our face, allowing us to breathe easier. As we go down, we want to stay in the natural line of the rope. Walking to one side to avoid obstacles can lead to dangerous swings if we slip. If we feel the rope wanting to pull us to one side or the other, we should go with it to find the natural line. If there is an overhang or other obstacle, it's often easier to come down to our knees to get around it. It's okay to use one hand to support ourselves against the rock as we negotiate the obstacle, but we should be aware to always keep holding the brake strand. Look in all directions to plan your next move. Make sure to look up too to ensure the rope is lying in the right place and not on a sharp rock. Repel slowly and in control and try not to create unnecessary bouncing, which could also damage the rope when it's touching the rock. These basic principles will take time to master, so practice them with an experienced mentor who can provide you with a backup belay while you learn. Take your time in the beginning and choose routes that will be easy for you. After some practice, rappelling can be as fun as jumping or sliding in the canyon. Just make sure you always stay in control and practice good technique. 